Hi, I'm Noah, the Mod Systems Developer for Frenzy VR. In this video, I will outline the mod creation process from start to finish. If you follow along, you will set up your dev environment, create a new weapon for the game, and finally, build and deploy the mod bundle. I have provided a link in the description to a written guide as well. This is a key resource for modding Frenzy VR, though it is more conceptual for step-by-step -step visual learning, this video has you covered. The first thing we will need to do is grab the correct version of the Unity editor. Navigate to the Unity download archive. You can use the link in the description or written guide. We are looking for version 2020.3.25. Give that a download. You might need to install Unity Hub first if you have never used Unity before. In the installer, make sure you grab the Android Build Sport modules as well. While Unity is installing, navigate to the Frenzy VR Mod Project Git repo. The link is in the description and written guide. Clone or download the repo. I'm going to clone it, but you can just download the zip if you prefer. Although, using Git will allow you to pull in any fixes or extensions we add to the mod project later. Once you have a copy of the mod project, and Unity is installed, open up the project. If you have multiple versions of Unity, make sure you open it up with the correct one. Once open, a good place to start is looking at the examples folder. This folder contains a complete prefab for a modded gun, the Extinction Pistol. There are also a few art assets we will be using in this walkthrough. Frenzy VR contains some source code Inoverse is not licensed to redistribute in its uncompiled format. Therefore, prefabs for mods consist only of art and a data profile. And that profile is used by the game to reconstruct the whole object with all of its functionality at runtime. The Extinction Pistol is a good example of what the profile for a weapon looks like. If you want to make a gun, it's a good template that you can copy. Let's create some weapons. First, duplicate the pistol prefab for use as a template. Rename it and open it up. Drag the model into the hierarchy under meshes and colliders, then delete the pistol model. Next, we will position some transform nodes and triggers to match the layout of the model. The grip position looks fine, so we'll leave that unchanged. Select all the bullet origin objects and position them at the end of the barrel. Align the ammo socket, its trigger, and the auto mag drop with the magazine of the model. Next, align the cocking mechanism trigger zone and grab point. The trigger detects when the hand is in range to grab the lever, and the grab point determines where the hand will snap to when grabbing it. This is true for all grab points. We missed the mag grab trigger earlier, so go ahead and align it with the other mag triggers. Move the stabilizer grabbable trigger to the second grip on the gun and align the grab point. All the triggers and transforms look good, so now we'll clean up some references left over from the pistol. We don't need this audio source, so delete the game object. Remove the on fired event. Change the onloaded event to enable the mag mesh game object, and the on empty event to disable it. Disable the mag mesh so that it starts out ready to receive ammo. On the profile component, update the references to the magazine and cocking handle game objects.
Next we'll set up the cocking mechanism positions. Copy in the forward position, move the handle into the back position and copy this value. Then return it to the forward position. The eject and chamber positions should be somewhere in the range between forward and back. I just approximate the halfway point in this demo. Next we'll set some stats. The recoil values left over from the pistol are a bit high, so I lowered them to the values we are using for this gun in Frenzy Extinction. Same with the weight stat. I set a melee damage value, but forgot to set up a collider. Add a collider to enable pistol whipping and to make sure the gun does not pass through other colliders. This can be in its own game object under meshes and colliders. The cocking mechanism type is set to zero for reciprocating. Any integer field labeled with type will give a tooltip if you hover over the name. Make sure to use one of the listed values. Set the ammo type to 1 so that it accepts machine gun ammo. Set fire type to 2 for full automatic firing. Those are the key parameters we need to get this thing working as expected. Feel free to experiment with other values. Next, we will create a spear capable of stabbing into enemies. Duplicate and rename the pistol prefab for use as a template. Replace the art, dragging in the new model, and deleting the pistol model. In the profile component, toggle off is gun and clear out the missing references. Toggle on is Stabber. Note the Stabber Collider's array. We will add to this once we set one up. The default Stabber parameters are absolutely fine for this weapon. You can hide the irrelevant gun and bow components so they are out of your way. Position the Stabber Tip and Stabber Base transforms. The tip goes on the pointy side, but they are reversible if the Stabber is set to double-sided in the profile. Rotation of these transforms does not matter. The line start and line end transforms define the orientation of the grippable area of a weapon. Position them near the base and end of the shaft. 
Next, set up some colliders. Exclude the stabby area for now, that will be its own thing. box collider here is probably not necessary, but it should keep the sphere from rolling away. Next set up a capsule collider for the stabber. Stabber colliders are typically very long and narrow. Add your new Stabber Collider to the Stabber Collider's array on the Profile component from earlier. Also, I forgot to set a melee damage parameter here. 10 is a good starting value, and you can experiment and make adjustments from there. With that, the spear is done! For our final weapon, we'll make a Blunt Pipe Club. It's basically the same process as the spear, but without the Stabber. See if you can do this one yourself. I'm going to shut up for a while and just let the footage roll. The sections after this cover building and deploying your mod bundles if you want to skip to that.
Once you have completed all of your weapon prefabs, you'll need to add them to asset bundles. At the bottom of the preview window, pick the Extinction Weapons Pack from the Asset Bundle dropdown. Do this for all of the prefabs and all of the art used. When you make your own mods, be sure to remove this bundle from the project and create one with your own unique name. Once everything is set to the correct bundle, select Frenzy Modding from the toolbar at the top and then build the mod for your target platform. Bundles will build to the Asset Bundles folder in the project's root directory. Next, prepare the data init Lua script. This points the game to your content and allows for some properties to be overwritten. Here we create a local table for each weapon, providing the path to the prefab and the name of the weapon as displayed in-game. You can delete the other parameters. Then, add the tables we created for each weapon to the global weapon table, using the prefab address of each as its key. Make sure you match them up correctly. Triple check your prefab paths as your weapons will not load if they are incorrect. And with that, our Lua file is done. Now that we have all our mod files, it is time to gather them all up into a folder for delivery. Copy your built bundles and manifests into the export content slash bundles directory, overwriting anything already there. Select all of the Unity meta files and delete them. Then select everything and zip it up. Give the zip a good name that reflects the mod content. This zip is what you will want to upload to Mod.io. But for now, we will do a manual install. Drag the zip someplace outside of the Unity project so that it does not generate more meta files. Unzip it, and all the content should be right inside. If it is nested another folder deep, it will not work. For installing on desktop, Copy the unzipped folder to your app data, local low, Anoverse LTD, Frenzy VR, local mods folder. For installing on Quest, you'll need to copy the folder to Android data com.anoverseltd.frenzyvr slash files slash local mods. If you're using SideQuest like me, sometimes it has problems with the bundles folder, so you may have to go in and do these files individually. 